I'm Richard from Electric Classic Cars and I'm sitting next to a 100 kilowatt hour battery pack out of an electric car. And if the media stories are true, this is about to explode into flames. But is it really? Let's get into it. Right, now I'm gonna start off this episode with a bombshell everybody, so I hope you're sitting down. And that is, electric cars can catch fire. All right, whether or not you're an EV hater, EV lover or somewhere in between, it's fair to say the facts are electric cars can catch fire. However, so can petrol cars, so can diesel cars, so can hydrogen cars. In fact, any vehicle where you are storing the energy to be used, that energy is going to want to escape, given half the chance, in a dramatic fashion, i.e. an explosion or a fire. So as long as we've established that baseline that electric cars can and do, now and again, catch fire, then we shall move on because now it becomes a case of what's the likelihood of it catching fire and what are the consequences if it does catch fire. So let's talk about those two things. Now we've all seen the stories out there on media about electric car fires and the consequences of that, but I think that's more a reflection of how media and you know, social commentators, if you like, work nowadays chasing clickbait type headlines rather than a reflection of the facts. And what I mean by that is, if you want to have a look at what is the likelihood, if you like, of an electric car fire, it would be great to have a crystal ball or a time machine to be able to go into the future when we might have, I don't know, 50% or more electric cars being sold on our roads. But we don't need that, actually, because in Scandinavian countries like Norway and Sweden, which is a good example, Sweden has 40% of all cars sold in May of this year were pure electric cars. So if we really want to get a good idea of the facts about how, how likely electric cars are to catch fire, we need to look at studies that are done in those countries by you know, reputable agencies, either firefighting agency or risk assessment, government agencies, etc., as to what are the likely percentages of electric cars catching fire. So, luckily there are reports available, so let's have a look at the facts. Right, so I've got a report in my hand um, to get the facts completely right for you guys, and it's by the MSB, which is the authority in Sweden that uh, is looking into preventing and managing accidents and crises, if you like. So, they do various different studies into all sorts of things, including vehicle fires. So here's a report that's uh, looking into, and they've been looking into this and tracking it for many, many years. So this isn't just a one-off. This is fires and electric vehicles in 2022, and we'll put a link to this report in the description. So in Sweden, they have um, almost 4.4 million cars on the road in Sweden. 611,000 of them are, are electric. And of those 611,000 cars last year, 23 of them caught fire. But 3,400 cars also caught fire that were petrol, okay? So we need to look at this as a percentage rather than just numbers because obviously there's a lot less electric cars on the road than there are ICE cars, if you like. So as a percentage, that means that there uh, were 0.004% of the electric cars caught fire last year and 0.08% of ICE cars caught fire. So that means electric cars were 20 times less likely to catch fire than an ICE car. I'll say that again, 20 times less likely to catch fire than an ICE car. So there are, this is just one report, there's lots of other reports I've seen out there, but this is a good one because they've been tracking this for a number of years. And another thing that's really interesting in the last three years in Sweden, electric cars have doubled, if you like, in number. But the number of electric car fires has stayed the same, on average around about 20. So that's also an interesting trend. The number of cars is going up, but the actual number of electric car fires is actually staying the same, which is an interesting fact. So it's a fair conclusion to come to that electric cars are much less likely to catch fire than an uh, internal combustion engine car. And 
no matter which side of the fence you're on, you can't deny those facts, okay? So I think we've established quite clearly electric cars are less likely to catch fire than petrol and diesel cars. However, it's the consequences that people should be concentrating on, if you like. So let's get into the consequences of an electric car fire. So an electric vehicle fire is what's called a, a low probability, high consequence event, which is a terminology that comes from health and safety world, I think, isn't it? That's right. So that covers a multitude of things like um, uh, an airplane crash, for instance. Very unlikely to happen, but when it does, it ain't going to end well. However, that doesn't stop people from flying, and it should be the same for electric vehicles. So let's concentrate on the high consequence sort of things. What do I mean by that? Well, let's look first of all at internal combustion engine fire. So I've got a good old jerry can of fuel here and a petrol car, for instance. You can put that out with a fire triangle. What's the fire triangle? It's um, ignition, fuel... And oxygen. And oxygen. And if you take one of them out, like oxygen, for instance, with something like that, you can usually put that fire out. But that is not really the, as simple to do with an electric vehicle fire. So let's have a chat about that. So an electric vehicle fire, or electric battery fire, if you like, is fundamentally different to a petrol or diesel fire. Everything that it needs to um, fuel itself is contained in here. So if there's a overcharge or a, a, a short or a penetration, whatever, that starts this off, what will happen is something called thermal runaway. So essentially the temperature of a cell or a module will get to a certain point beyond which it's, there's no return, if you like. So that then starts a chain reaction of that cell going on fire, knocking onto the next one, knocking onto the next one, etc., etc., etc. Now, the problem is with that is twofold. The temperature gets really, really hot and it's contained within a lovely metal container here so that if firefighters get to it they can't really suppress the heat and the fire with water very effectively because it's in here unless you drill a hole in there and fill that full of water it's going to have minimal effect if you like so that's the problem if you like with electric vehicle fires is when they start they're kind of a self-propellant fire They've got everything in here that they need to burn, which is why a lot of people say, just let them burn. Uh, and the second problem is that they're really difficult to kind of control, if you like. So firefighters are having to change their strategy as to how to deal with an electric vehicle fire compared to an internal combustion fire, which is usually just water. Throwing huge amounts of water on electric vehicle fire is not an efficient way of doing, dealing with it. So what are companies or countries like Norway and Sweden doing? Well, they are changing tack. So they're doing things like this. There's a lithium battery fire blanket in here. And what that does, if you cover a car in a, um, a battery, a fire blanket, it suppresses the temperature, if you like, gets that temperature down and down and down so that hopefully then you can then control it with water in a more effective way. There are also other systems out there which are being used in places like Sweden, for instance, which actually penetrate the battery and then put water in, and they're very effective. Because essentially, don't forget, the main thing to put this out will be lower, lowering the temperature. So they actually penetrate the battery box either from underneath or from uh, on top, and they fill it full of water and again we'll put some links up in the description so you can see these systems in, in you know in practice but that's an effective way of doing it so in short they're difficult to put out with conventional um, firefighting technologies um, or, or strategies but there's new strategies being adopted now especially in countries where are ahead of the game like in Scandinavia which are proving very effective I guess what we're trying to say here is that the facts don't necessarily always tally up with the media headlines that are out there. And that should come as no surprise to most people out there, I reckon. But I'll give you three examples. Let's cover off the Fremantle car transportation ship, for instance. That, when that was, went on fire, you know, it was very dramatic looking, and the media very quickly, headlines were, electric car starts it. Mm, nah, 
then some more facts came out and that got diluted to well. It might not have started it, but it definitely made it worse. And then more facts started to come out and like, you know, got diluted again. But that is a good example of where facts aren't available because the investigative report is not out yet on what the cause was. But the media will certainly jump on it and say it's an electric vehicle fire that started it because of, you know, some half-truth somewhere, if you like, but they'll run it as a headline. Never, never let, um, was it? Never let facts get out in the way of a good story, as they say, isn't it? So that's one example. Another example is um, multi-story car parks and car parks, for instance. I get told, you know, uh, don't park electric cars in those car parks because of the fire risk. Well, we've already addressed the fact that it's very, very unlikely that they'll catch fire, and more likely, in fact, that petrol cars will. And there was a fire in Liverpool many years ago, in fact, only 2018, I think, where thousands of cars were destroyed in a car park there, and it was started by a petrol car. You know, huge amount of cars destroyed, but it barely made regional news. If that was an electric car that started that fire, it would be global news, and it would be pushed for years and years to come. Electric car starts fire, thousands of cars destroyed. But petrol cars start that kind of fire every single day. But the media, well, who cares? Um, and the other one is, you know, I get told, uh, don't park your electric car near your house or, or in your garage, for instance, because, you know, it'll catch fire and set your home on fire. Well, to think that a petrol car won't do the same is wrong. And bear in mind the likelihood of that happening with an electric cars is really, really, really small. But a petrol car can also, and do, catch fire when parked. BMW at the moment, they're recalling millions of cars at the moment because they're catching fire when parked. So petrol and electric cars can catch fire when parked as well. So there's just a number of examples, and I could go on forever, but then Tim would start saying, cut, 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 where there's examples of you know, electric cars being... you know poo-pooed, if you like, because of catching fire. And some is misinformation as well. There are videos out there that I get sent saying, look at this electric car catching fire. And a little bit of an investigation, you think, that's not an electric car, guys. That's a petrol Mercedes. Or another one was a, a truck with LPG tanks on the back that crashed in Russia. And people were saying it's electric car fire. So all we're saying in this video is do your investigation, if you like, yourselves. But you'll find that the facts of the situation with electric vehicle fires is by far and away different to the way that it's seen in media and in some social um, media channels, if you like. So on that note, I hope you enjoyed this video and found it informative, and we'll see you on the next one.